Hello, I'm Anna Diffin, and this is Star Ruler 2. This is a 4X RTS game from Blind Mind Studios, and I was drawn to this game by the shipbuilding mechanic, where you build your ship up in up to like a couple hundred tiles, and or hex tiles, and yeah, you get to select the size and position of the modules on the ship, and well, depending on where you position them, depends on well, how well defended they are, and if or not, when someone shoots at them, if they will get destroyed or not. A very nice little feature. Also, the system for upgrading planets and from addition extra tiers for increasing your population is based on a trade system throughout your empire. It can get a little bit complex, but that's part of the course in 4X games. So, without further ado, I'll begin the game. And yeah, but I've not actually played the game properly, which is mainly playing playing around on the sandbox. So you could probably just play the Terrakin, fairly basic. Nice little sort of bonus to extra asteroids, things like that. And a very basic hyperdrive. It's the slowest FTL, but it's also the most versatile. The other factions are okay which have verdant spaceships, so rather than building a bridge, you have to build this sinew throughout the ship, which is quite weird. The Hunan, which, well, look kind of Borg-like, actually. They have these orbitals, which um, are like bonuses in close round, but considering I like going on, on the offensive, I don't think they'll suit me very well. The Fey? Yeah, the thing. They have devout, uh, devout, and so they have shrines. Shrines are massive shield generators. I mean, huge shield generators. So, who is that? They seem to sacrifice planetary resources, which seems a bit odd, but no matter. The Star Temple sending out missionaries, various benefits. I have no idea what that is, or even entails. But what they have, they have the hyperdrive. These ones, ah, these have the fling beacons. Fling beacons, you build, you build them at, one, at your own in your own system, and they launch ships away from them really quickly, incredibly fast, and very efficient. However, you can't get back quickly. You have to go very slowly. You actually don't have to play with F FTL at all in this game. You, the ships can move quite fast without it. It just takes a long time. The Mono are uh, a mechanoid race. I quite, generally quite like these races in 4X games because they don't require food. They just use loads and loads of labour. But it's not recommended for beginners. I am definitely a beginner of this game. And the Hunili use motherships, which they have to, huge you know, constructions which they then orbit round actual planets and use those for population rather than the planets themselves. It's a shame I thought they didn't have to even use the planets at all, but there we have it. Still, I'm going to play with the Terrakin, and they seem fairly basic, and add a couple more AI. I'll go six player, I think. A spiral galaxy, and six of us. We'll go to about 80 planets. I don't know if 80 planets is good or not, but we'll see. So, let's just begin the game. And I've got to put my timer on. So, just quickly pause the game. So, as you can see at the top corner, this is the, the monetary budget. You have this amount of, you have a certain amount of money which you have to spend within three minutes. If you don't spend it, in those three minutes, then it will get put into one of these welfare grants, which can be additional work, um, combat readiness with global defense, research grants, subsidized power and increased power, or influence generation. All of which are really quite neat. Because rather than you know having a single pool of money, you have to have a budget. And it means that if you want to build an absolutely huge capital ship, you have to build it in a dry dock, which then in turn, it takes a little time to get going. Let's just have a quick overview of the Spiral Galaxy. Okay, so we've got a few systems around here. Got my K 
carrier and a load of really awful ships. Okay, well, maybe I don't want to play with these guys that do not like the default designs. So it's, what's on my home planet? Okay, we've just got a, a factory and a city at the moment. And it's getting me a little bit of income. Yes, I only have the one planet, and it requires water to level up. So, we need to find a planet which has additional water. So I will colonise this planet. It's going to colonise from homeworld when I unpause it. So there's some ore. Mining for mining ships. Be good. What I do want to do is get a scout ship. So, go to the designs. Here are various designs which come for, by default. So, this is a scout. This scout has a completely useless torpedo launcher. It's actually a torpedo launcher rather than a <laughs> missile launcher. Yeah, it, it doesn't need a torpedo launcher. It's not going to do anything with six damage because, say, the tiny little gunship has an approximation of 27 health. This, that is only a rough approximation of the strength of the ship, because all you need to do is destroy the mainframe, the actual, the various crew decks. So you have to shoot through all these tiles, or any, in, in any direction, to destroy the core. You can put multiple crews in, and this is the reason why I consider this ship to be weak. The other reason is that it's a size 1 ship, the smallest ship possible, and yet it uses two weapons. These should really be combined to a single weapon. Because you see the damage there, the 0.63. If that damage is greater than the damage resistance of the, of the armor plate, it will cause damage. So, against this ship, it will cause damage. Say against my Dreadnought, it won't do any damage at all. Against Heavy Gunship, it will just do minimal damage. So the first thing we're going to do is upgrade the Gunship design. So saying I need at least one control, we're going to put a gun, a railgun, in here. Now there's been a few different designs I like. And this is the design which I've felt is very strong. So build a control here, and let's sort of go in like a bullet shape. So like this. This is the other bottom, that's the maximum complexity of a ship you may build. and a couple of engines on the back. How about that? So here, a couple more control. I think one there and one there. This is so that if a shot comes through here, it won't be able to destroy all. Or goes through there, it will be able to destroy it too, but otherwise it'll just go through a couple of armor plates. This is a bit too fast for me, actually. Anyway, I'm going to save this design as the Corvette. Compare it. And reduce it down to size 1. So this now has a damage of 1.3 and still similar sort of DPS. So I'll save that, and see, compared to the normal gunship, it was a 0 .6, 0 0.63. This is a 1.3 damage. Considerably superior. So say you're coming up against the heavy carrier, the damage resistance actually won't, still won't be quite enough for this Corvette. So, in fact, this cor the Corvette isn't that useful Regardless, but it will be able to take out some of these like armor plates on these small ships. Say a beam ship, point two. Let's say something like the heavy gunship, I will actually be able to do damage with the Corvette. So I'm going to mark this as obsolete. 
The next design I'm going to upgrade is the beam ship. Because, again, the weapon systems are too spread out. Multiple weapon systems are okay, but I'm going to drop this down just to two weapons. And these armor plates are kind of pointless at the back. They're too fast for my liking as well. There's not much need for its huge speed over the dreadnought. Because the ships will always move in relation to their flagship. So, as I've been saying, I haven't even mentioned that. So yes, the all these are support ships. They require to be assigned a flagship or a planet to, to actually orbit. But they don't cost any upkeep. The flagships do. So let's create another design. I'm going to go for two lasers. And some armor plates here. A plate of plate I do like, because it has a very high resistance. See here, it's about double the resistance, but it has less at half the health. For these ships, this will be sufficient. Which is what I'm going to do though is surround the core with additional armor there. Similar sort of thing, this bullet shape ship. I'm actually going to put another couple of crew in here and here, and a couple of engines at the back. I really like symmetry in my designs, as you may begin to notice. Again, this is a bit fast for my liking, so I will probably knock out some of that there. So I should put 4.7, that's good. And these weapons are now considerably more pat considerably more useful. 2.3 beam damage per second there. An additional just more abilities, so I'll just put that in there. There's not much point not building the maximum interior space. It doesn't make your ship any better. So you might as well just use it. It's the cruiser design, isn't it? So yeah. Oh no, it's the destroyer. Destroyer. So the destroyer. That save as the Corvette. So to compare, it's actually one is actually slightly quicker to build, which is nice. Only marginally, they're basically the same, 0.7 to 0.71. But here the damage is 1.67. But the weapons are spread out. Which is also a fair bit slower. When they're surrounding a ship which only got 4.2, you don't need them to be very quick. So, the Mark Beam ship is obsolete. And now, do some sort of thing with the missile boat. The missile boat will actually base on the Corvette design. So, we'll duplicate it. And begin to go from here. So, I'll just delete that weapon system entirely. Missiles don't need to be facing forward, they can be facing in any direction. I just found that it's always a little bit better to do like this. And this is going to be size 2. So this is going to be my frigate. So again, this design has actually been very effective. I do quite like this design. In all the testing I've done, it's proven to be a good design. Mainly because it's again this diamond shape. But I think I, 
can improve on it a little bit. And I will do, and I've done so with this. Mainly, it doesn't, again, it doesn't need that speed. It doesn't even need this speed. I'm going to slow that down a bit. It's going to slow them both down. So, good mark, this is obsolete. Put a couple more pips into the railguns there. And a couple more into the missile launcher here. That makes it a bit, a bit more powerful with its missile and makes it and slows it down just a little bit. So it's just going to, I'm just going to pause for a second. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, where were they? Oh yes. Um, oh yeah, it's designs. <clears throat> so yeah, so I've just improved this design a little bit there. So 4.7. 5.2, 5.2 there. You see, I have a huge excess of control. The reason that I've gone for these two here is actually to improve the repair. That, the main thing does not improve the repair. It's the actual crew parts which give repair per second. It's, <clears throat> I like being able to repair a fair bit, or fairly quickly, so that ships can move in and out of combat with ease. So, that's my upgraded ships built there. The heavy gunship I will probably decide on later. For the cruiser and the heavy cruisers. For now, I think I'll go to, back to the scout design. And I was mentioning about this. The damage 6.75 is pitiful. Truly is, even on the torpedo launcher, which is generally weak anyway. So, knock that out there. Put the armor plates back on. So, hyperdrive speed is a bit excessive. So, I'm going to take some of these off anyway. So, I'm going to build two controls. Three controls there. Make it so they can't be shot through a single way. The reason we want a fair bit of repair here is that I want to be able to repair quickly the engines if they get shot up. So, small battleship. Quickly build up a little bit more engine there. I can build on this. And the hyperdrive speed is kind of obscene. What's this? See, the upkeep on this is high. Is there any way I can reduce that? Not really. Undo, undo. No. See, the engines seem to have the highest upkeep. But the engines are also what makes it go quickly. So I could put iron engines on to make it turn quickly. But then I would need a power generator. And I think it's good like that. It's just a bit of an improvement. So I'll save the scout design. Minor, maybe. I, I don't know. I've never used the miner. Somebody with a tractor beam ship. I have not used them because I have not played them. And the scout was just because it doesn't need that missile launcher. If the scout's getting shot up, then something's gone wrong. So, let's actually build one. So we'll click on the planet there and build a scout. And let us unpause. The colony ships being sent out. And scout will be done shortly. I'll actually pause again. Because I want to ensure 
my fleet is at full capacity, which it is not. So I'm going to build some corvettes and some destroyers. And some of my frigates. I spent most of my money. The only thing I want to do on the planet. So, if you have a look here, this means I cannot afford it within the covered budget, and the next budget is not sufficient to borrow. You can borrow from the next budget, it's just it costs a lot more. I think it is, it's about 50% it's about or it look, looks like it. So I could build these using the budget, but it would be expensive. What ships can do, you can do a dry dock, which allows you to put on budget each Put, mo put money in from each budget, but the total cost is only 25% rather than 50. But still, I'm going to leave this further like that, and probably go put a little bit into influence, which could be used for diplomacy. So diplomacy is used by purchasing these cards. You can purchase these cards down here for use in diplomatic abilities. But in order for that, you need influence. Now, actually, I think we should be around about the 20 minute mark. So yes, I'll actually unpause the game and get into the main swing of things next time. Thank you very much for watching this Let's Play of was it Star Order 2. <laughs> I forgot what I was playing then. So, I shall see you.